Hey, my name's Steven, coming at you from Florida. Hello, y'all. This is Kevin, coming from Texas. My name's David. I'm coming from the heartland, Ohio. And welcome to the Brothers Born Podcast. And we're excited to talk to you. Yes, we are. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning. Uh, so typically we start the episode and you and I discuss, you know, what we've been up to lately. And what our listeners don't know is that we record the episodes two weeks ahead of time. So by the time they listen to it, or maybe sometimes it's a week ahead of time, but either way, by the time they listen to it, the thing we've been up to is kind of old news, you know? That's true. Yeah. Uh, especially, especially when we talk about like, oh, I've been watching WandaVision. And it's like, well, we already, by the time people hear this, we've already actually completed that task. Maybe we should change it. And we talk about what we think we'll be up to in two weeks. <laughs> what we think we'll be up to in two weeks. And oh, man. I think that'd be a good pattern. But this situation is particularly unique because this is a bonus episode of sorts. We don't know exactly when. It's going to be posted. So that's true. <laughs> yeah. So, cause, so we were, we were going to, so t- we were recording this on Mother's Day. And um, we, you were going to have all, all three of us, of course, do this. But um, David had uh, some Mother's Day related activity. Happen. It's important. It's important. It's, it's important. Yeah, yeah. It's important. I get that. Um, so we decided we we're just going to record this one without him. But thing is, like, to say, oh, well, it's because of Mother's Day. Then when the listeners listen to it, it's actually two weeks from now, so or however long it yeah, is. Yeah, it could now. be like <laughs> two years from now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we have to think about this. We have to be very abstract. What will it be, will we be up to when the listeners finally get this episode? Oh, are we assuming that they're listening to it two weeks from now? See, I kind of want to think about this as if we don't know. And just try and take a good guess what we're up to, we'll be up to. This will test our prophetic skills, um, see what uh, what's going on in our lives. So, it okay, could because that 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 would kind of matter because, like, if if I'm assuming that people are listening to it two weeks from today, yes, we'll start there. We'll start there. All right. So if there's assume- people are listening to it two weeks from today, then I will probably be at Six Flags. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So that's cool. That's what you'll that's what you'll be up to lately <laughs> in two weeks. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think I'll be at Six Flags on the twenty third of May. All right. I will be in Ohio actually. I'm going up to visit um Stephanie's sisters getting married. And in two weeks on a Sunday, I will be uh preparing for a big game night. So the Monday the twenty fourth, my buddies and I, Dawson and Brendan. So Sean and Chad, we're going to do a day from morning until night where we just play nothing but board games and magic and a bunch of nerdy stuff. So it'll be by my nerdy night Eve in two weeks. So that's kind of exciting. Six flags and, you know, my thing. Okay. So, so we both have a general idea what we're actually going to be doing in two weeks. In two weeks. So let's assume that, you know, whoever's listening to this is listening to it, you know, Sometime down the road, because you know you're not necessarily going to listen to it in two weeks. You know, maybe this particular listener just discovered our podcast yes. and they're you know yeah. catching up. So it's actually like November third or something. Who knows? So what will you be up to during this unusual, unprecedented time? Um, I'm going to assume that I will probably be watching some sort of because you know usually when we have discussion what we've been up to, mine's usually some sort of YouTuber. Yes. So it'll be, I'll probably be having some sort of, watching some sort of YouTuber. Maybe I'll be watching YouTube channels while bread making or something. You know, I make bread. All right. Let's say for me, it's November 3rd or some other unusual time. It is my goal to be doing some sort of more, like we're doing our podcast. I'm trying to gain a bigger internet presence. So maybe I'll be working on like a blog or a, our podcast of taking it to the next level or maybe a different podcast i know you and i have talked about some other projects we're interested in a buddy of mine has also talked about a project we're interested in and i'm talking about starting a food podcast with my brother-in-law so i'll probably be doing something along those lines and 
you know that I'll be doing some cross advertising for sure when the, when the time comes. Yeah, I think that's that's actually brings me to a point. One of the things that Steve and I have discussed possibly doing, if we ever get around to doing it and have time, is uh, doing some live streaming of us playing video games that we're terrible at. Yes. Um, because because you, you you're just like me. You know, we both play video games, but we're not really gamers. Not at all. <laughs> like not at all. Like I, I play games once in a while. Sometimes I'll have I had a binge game of gaming last night actually because I had nothing better to do with my time. But generally speaking, we're not really gamers. You know, it's like a hit or miss, off and on type of thing for both of us. I think. See, I'm a kind of I, I have I like a lot of nerdy things, and I not necessarily nerdy. You know, let's scratch that word. It's it's derogatory. I uh. <laughs> I'm into a lot of different things. I like to play music and edit music. I like doing this podcast. I like to read a lot. I like to play video games, lots of shows I like to watch. There's lots of things I got my hands in, so to speak. So I found, oh, I like, you know, as you, I can't believe I forgot this. I like Dungeons and Dragons and Magic the Gathering and other board of games course. a lot. So I found because I'm so interested in so many different things that I can't commit to any of them like 100%. So I'm always like, just okay at any of those things i'm not actually like really good at any one particular thing well well for me with video games like um i i have you know other things going on um yeah, sure <laughs> i mean right now i've been kind of studying so you know in a you know complete eight hour drives away a drive away from where my family actually is at the moment so you know i have a little more free time than well sort of um than a normal but like i don't a game a lot because usually i'm spending time with my kids or I'm, yeah you know or i'm doing something star wars related or gi <laughs> joe related yeah yeah okay. well you, you get what i'm saying <laughs> so yeah you know i i really don't game that much which i which is why i think it'd be fun to have a stream live stream of us playing video games because we're both not very good at them so our listeners would you be interested in something like that because you know you're our loyal listeners and we want to make you happy so uh <laughs> we hope that you're into that idea if you are let us know because it's something we want to look into for sure i uh streaming about games that were terrible at so what would should happen is i should find some game like i'm i've always never i've never been good at first person shooter games ever like they're yeah, fun. I'm not very good at them either so i think that'd be that'd be a fun one because i just get hosed all the time <laughs> like I'd start in the battlefield gone <laughs> i was actually playing fortnite last night which is funny because you well, know like third fortnite person was, shooter yeah but it was like a really big thing for a while but people have i i don't know because like i said i'm not a gamer but i think the gaming community has kind of moved away from fortnite a little bit but people still play it yeah i'm terrible at that game like just the worst so you know you see guys are racking up like kill after kill after kill i'm like hey look i shot somebody one time and, <laughs> and didn't kill them <laughs> didn't kill them. Yeah, I'm that guy who builds a staircase endlessly into the sky and then uh, <laughs> just gets just gets wrecked. Yeah. Well, so I, I this friend a long time ago he's really into Call of Duty. Well, I'm in the army, a lot of people are because <laughs> they're all kid they're all a bunch of kids. But a long time ago this friend was really into Call of Duty and he would I'd go over to his house sometimes and he'd be like, Hey, let's play some Call of Duty. I'm like, dude, you know how terrible I'm at that game. Like, why do you want to play? I suspect the only reason he ever wanted to play Call of Duty with me was because he wasn't very good at it either, I don't think. Okay. And so it made him feel good about himself because he was better than I was. So <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it's the only thing I can think of. Or, like, why didn't he play his game? Like, you know, I suck at it and I don't really play it. So. so when it comes to video games, my personal favorite genre, if you will, are like action adventure slash RPG games. Like, I love, I, I love the Final Fantasy series. I love Legend of Zelda. In fact, I have made it a goal in my life to play every Zelda game from start to finish and every Final Fantasy main storyline game from start to finish. I can't do all this, the spinoffs, but that's kind of like a goal of mine. And those are my favorite kind of games. But I also found those are like the biggest, those games take the most time. And I've never like, I never try and do all the extra stuff. Like there's people that play Breath of the Wild, for example on youtube who do all this crazy junk where they're like i'm gonna beat the game in five minutes or something crazy like that or uh the people who get all the extra stuff all the ultimate weapons in the final fantasy games. all the all the side quests yeah like i'm i'll do some of them the ones that seem essential so i can make my characters strong enough to beat the game but i just don't like there used to be a time where i was a completionist but i just can't do that anymore <laughs> 
Yeah. And, and what's well, speaking of Breath of the Wild, there's a lot of, well, it's just RPGs like that in general. Well, I guess Breath of the Wild is not really an RPG, but, you know, like Breath of the Wild, Final Fantasy games. One of the things I've kind of noticed kind of weird about those games is, uh, we'll t- let's first we'll look at Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy. I'll, I'll say Final Fantasy Seven. Okay. Just because first one I thought of. You had this huge world, right? Yeah. Like a giant whole planet. <laughs> and this planet has like five cities on it. It's true. And really only one of them is a city. The rest yeah. of them are just like little villages. <laughs> and so like... <laughs> and when you get to those little villages, there's like maybe four houses. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, same with like Breath of the Wild. I mean, Breath of the Wild kind of explains it because, you know, he had like Calamity Ganon, so maybe a bunch of people died or something. Yeah, yeah. But like, it's the same thing. You have like these small areas and they're all like these, these little villages. So why are there no people in these worlds? <laughs> like, or, and like the little village has like one or two kids. So yeah. like, it's up to them to save the community when the, when in terms of repopulation and the kids are always weird too. It's always like you walk up and they, they have no problem talking to strangers. They don't know you from anybody else. You're just some random adventure and you go up to some kid and they'll be like, Oh, look, I'm looking for flowers or something crazy yeah. like that. And you're like, where are your parents? First of all, <laughs> what's going on here? And I think it's always funny. Like sometimes they'll have their name. Like you, like somehow you just know their name. <laughs> <laughs> I have an example here. I thought this was really funny. So I played this game called I am Setsuna. It's an RPG. Um, it's uh, I played it a while ago. It's made by Square Enix and it's kind of, it's a, it's a more simple one. The, the, the soundtrack is all like one guy playing piano and it's a little, it's not a very long game. It's pretty cool. Anyway, there's a scene where you go into this like sauna bathhouse thing and you talk to a gentle voiced man. He says, these baths are me and I am these baths. Right now, you are in fact inside my very being. <laughs> like, like, there's some <laughs> weird people in these games. I never, like my character, like first of all, the character in this game doesn't ever talk either. For some reason, the main character doesn't say anything, which happens a lot in these games. But I went up to this dude and that's what he decided was most important to tell this complete stranger. <laughs> like, what would happen if I went up to if someone came up to me today and I said, I, it's a complete stranger, these baths are me and I am these baths right now. You are, in fact, inside my very being. Like, they would think I was tripping or something. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, well, Final Fantasy VII, they go to that amusement park, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. And I'm like, in order to have an amusement park, you have to have people to go to the amusement park. This thing isn't near a big city. It's just in the middle of some random place in the, on the world, right? Yeah. It's like the, you know, couple hundred people around the whole world go to this amusement park periodically. And there's people in there. It's like, what city are you from? Like, where where, where did you come from? Because there's no houses for you in any of the cities I've been. Yeah. The, the only exception in Final Fantasy VII is, um, was it Midjar or whatever it is? The big city. The first. Sure. Yeah, because you know you're only part on a small portion of that, so you can kind of get away with, with that one. But most of the games, like I say, have these little villages, or yeah. like look at um, Breath of the Wild, same thing. You go to these like tiny little villages, <laughs> villages and stables. So in the new Final Fantasy VII remake, I have not played it. I want to, but I don't have a PlayStation Four, and I probably won't be getting a PlayStation Five anytime soon. But uh, they've taken Final Fantasy VII, the original game. So you remember Midgar was like probably a good six hours of gameplay, maybe six or eight to eight mm-hmm. hours, depending on what you're doing. They've taken just that portion of the original game and made an entire 50 to 60 hour game out of it, which is pretty crazy to me. But I guess it's kind of cool. It, it probably has a bigger, more real feel compared to the original one, but it's still um, interesting. One thing I heard about it, which kind of I do kind of like this. One thing I always run into with art role-playing games is I feel like I have to talk to everyone. That way I get all the side quests. And half the time, they don't say anything important, clearly, the sauna guy. But um, <laughs> you feel like you have to talk to everybody. But I guess the way it's structured in the Final Fantasy VII Remake is you don't really talk to everybody. It just has like a screen on the side that just has like what people are, like light conversation that's going on. And if you really need to talk to someone, there'll be like a little glow above their head. So it makes it a little more like you don't have feel like you have to talk to everybody. And it has like this ongoing conversation that kind of gives you like some indication on the on the world you're in, which I think is kind of cool. I think I would enjoy that more. You don't feel like as obligated to talk to every single person. Uh, though sometimes 
you do run into some funny things like Breath of Wild. You find that lady who's cooking. You go talk to her, and she's like just an awful cook. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. Like totally worth the effort of talking to her, even though you do get nothing out of it. <laughs> or the of uh, the one person she's. I guess this is she's in front of a shrine, so it's a little bit different. But the one you step on the flowers, and she like murders you. Oh yeah, yeah. Her and then there's um where is it the, the one with all the women in it. Oh, uh, Gerudo town. Yeah, Gerudo, and they have like that class where they're sh- like teaching them how to how to get like men. Oh yeah, that's right. And that one lady's like, "Oh, well, I knocked them out and then forced them to come to my house." <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's not dating, but all right. <laughs> There's probably some guys out there who would love that though. I was like, man, that'd be so much easier for me. <laughs> but you know, I think well, another thing that's funny about in, in Breath of the Wild or any of the Final Fantasy games or any RPG or even some like you know, platformers and stuff. Some characters, you talk to them. Well, this happens all the time, actually. You talk to them again, they say the same exact thing they just said to you. So I always think that's funny. Like, what if that happened in real life? Someone talks to you and you just keep telling them, like, how was your day? Good. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so there's a um, YouTube channel, uh, Viva La Dirt, and they have a, a different web series and stuff. One of them's Epic NPC Man. They kind of play off of that a little bit. There's a character who, named Braylon who just walks around this town and he said he says, "Uh, hey, good morning. Nice day for fishing, isn't it?" <laughs> That's all he says. Oh yeah, I've seen that video. <laughs> it's pretty funny. So like, anytime anybody interacts with them on this video, that's all he says, no matter what. It's pretty. <laughs> it's pretty funny. So being a, an NPC in one of those worlds is uh, that'd be interesting. Like I. Or boring. It could be. It could be really boring, actually. You're just doing the same thing, the same mundane task, over and over and over again every day of your life. Sometimes it's a weird task too. It's like you're just uh, like walking back and forth, or like hanging a piece of laundry or something, like yeah. over and over again. Or then, or like the innkeepers. So I was thinking about this too. So you know, you go to the the inn to re- revitalize your health or whatever. Yeah. But it's always the same person. Yeah. So like that innkeeper. NPC is basically 24 hours a day, seven days a week, his entire life. Doesn't use the bathroom, doesn't eat or anything. He just stands right there waiting for someone to come so he can put you in his one bed, like, you know, hotel room. It's the only room in the entire inn, too. So, like, <laughs> that's true. There's always other guests, though. There'll be other guests in the lobby, like, ooh, this place is great. <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, but where do you sleep? Because there's only one room in here. So one one way around this, I've, I've thought of this before. You're not always at that place in the game. So something I've told myself to make me feel, feel better about these poor people who are just like always working is uh, when I'm not there, I'm assuming that maybe they're doing something else. And they're only, they're just conveniently at that end every time I'm there. <laughs> See, I almost want to say it's worse though, because then what you're saying is they're only there when you're there. Oh, that's true. So their, their entire life is like dependent on you showing up to their inn. What if you just decide not to go to that inn anymore? Like, oh, <laughs> my only source and how do of they, And how do they know that you're going to be there Yeah, at that time? <laughs> they just, they have a, that's part of the job training. They have this like intuitive <laughs> sense. They just know. That's one thing is kind of cool. This, this happened in, uh, you remember the game Brave Fencer Musashi? Uh, vaguely. I liked this game because it had like a mechanic where it was day and night, day and night, you know, and the stores actually closed at a certain hour. And at nighttime, you found these characters at the bar or at their house or something instead. And I always thought that was pretty cool. So it showed they, like, I can get behind that. They like, they had like this, or like one of them, some games, I think in like Animal Crossing, I think one of the characters, their store is not open on a certain day of the week or something like that. So it's kind of cool. Like they keep it a little more realistic that way. But that innkeeper is always there. <laughs> they have to be. <laughs> They're essential workers, man. They exactly. They would have been fine during this pandemic. I, th- I think another great example of like NPCs is um. So in Pokemon, Sun and Moon. Okay, and like, those ones. Right. So so you move into your you're moving to this island with your mom or whatever, and she's like, "Well, why don't you go ahead and start your adventure or whatever? I'm I'm going to start unpacking these boxes," and. It doesn't matter how long you play this game. Every time you go back home, she's still unpacking those boxes. <laughs> like she never unpacks. That's so funny. 
So She's- like, um, so, you know, like Kali played, was playing Sun Moon for a while. And this has been kind of like an ongoing joke between me and her. We just keep joking about how, or I'm like, Hey, every time she plays, it's like, Hey, did your mom finish packing, you know, unpacking the boxes? She's like, Nope. So maybe, I mean, we talked, we had a Pokemon episode with Kali once. It's hard for a parent. Maybe she is having a really emotional time unpacking these boxes because her kid is like gone now. And she's like, I'll just do it tomorrow. I'll just do it tomorrow. I can't handle it. <laughs> and so that's why she's always unpacking them because she just, the emotional weight of you leaving on a Pokemon adventure is just too much to bear. That's the best explanation I could come up with. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you might be right. You, you could be right. I don't know. NPCs are pretty entertaining. There's a um, thing is, but then imagine playing a game without them. Like, oh yeah, it, or, or where they're you know where they're necessary. You know, yeah. obviously if you're playing Call of Duty, you only NPCs. But yeah, although some shooters have like are squad based, and you'll have like AI squad members. Oh yeah, sure, sure. And they're like really terrible at aiming. <laughs> <laughs> they're just there to make it feel like it's more realistic. Yeah, so, so that's kind of fun. That way you're not like just one guy taking down an entire army. You have like okay, I have a group of soldiers. Well, then there's some where I know there's games where you can like bounce between characters. That's pretty cool. I like that. But that, that's interesting too because like the you're 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 person A, and he's doing really great. And then you switch to person B and person A, who you were just he's no longer good anymore because he's, <laughs> he's you're no longer controlling. So I think that's kind of interesting. I don't I can't think of any specific games, but I know I've seen that before where you like kind of bounce between the characters. There's a. World War II game called Brothers in Arms. I was like that. You played as basically four different characters. You switch them back and forth. Um, it was like a squad-based shooter or whatever. It, it, uh, that would be the case then. Although in that one, your AI squad members actually once in a while did take out a bad guy. That's cool. That's every, always nice. Every once in a while. <laughs> that's good. And uh, that's an old game. Though. That's that was. Uh, that's back when I still played video games like somewhat regularly. What game was that? It's called Brothers in Arms. It's a World War II game. How about an NPC in a game like... Uh, I guess they, they kind of intentionally make these games so you can interact with them in a unique way. But like I'm thinking of uh, like Grand Theft Auto or something like that, where like there's this person walking around and then you can just blast them. <laughs> it's like, oh, sweet. And, uh, you, they, it kinda, that stinks to be in that world, man. Like you never know what's going to happen. Like at least... In RPGs, you have the comfort and assurance that, you know, whatever you do, that character is going to be fine. Like, they're going to be sitting there walking around the well in the middle of the town over and over again, but they're going to survive. <laughs> That's true. Or they're going to be in the street selling uh, their turnips or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, like, people in games like Grand Theft Auto, or even, like, we used to like playing Tenchu, there's, like, you know, sometimes there'd be, like, good NPCs walking around in that game, but they could you could hurt them. And I, uh, I mean, that stinks. <laughs> like, that's a bummer. Like, that'd be a tough world to be in. There's a really funny movie coming out about that, I think, called uh, with Ryan Reynolds in it. Dang, what's it called? He, like, plays this guy who's a banker in a game, video game, and he kind of becomes self-aware. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know you're talking about. I don't know the name movie, though. Oh, hold on, I want to find it out. So I don't I, look like it. I'd like to play a video game where you play as an NPC who's become self-aware. That would be so interesting. Like where the whole game is just you doing some mundane task. <laughs> that'd be a so that'd be um, a good one for our stream that we're talking about. Free guy. The name is the name of the movie is called Free Guy. He's like this banker, and then somehow he ends up being like a really heavy hitter in this in the video game world. Cool. Well, this was fun. I uh, enjoyed this. I want to I want to kind of circle back to the beginning real quick though. You and I talked about you know trying to predict what we'll be doing. Let's say for a moment that someone discovers this podcast during the apocalypse. What will you be up to during that time? Um, I want to say that I'd be like, you know, one of the cool guys in an apocalypse who would be, you know, in charge of some group killing zombies, you know, like a or something. But let's face the facts, like I'm probably going to be one of the first people to go. <laughs> <laughs> what what yeah. I yeah, like I am. I'm okay with it. <laughs> it's probably better that way. <laughs> it probably is. You don't have to deal with the way crazy pe- way people get in an apocalypse situation. I'd probably be just like you. I'd be I'd be done. Or I'd get really fortunate and they'd be like, Who's that weirdo? We'll just leave him alone. He's just an ordinary guy. But uh 
either that or I'd be the guy who didn't realize apocalypse was ha- even happening. <laughs> so like I'd be at home or whatever, just doing stuff. And I'm like, man, I better go to the grocery store. And I walk out and there'd be no grocery store because the apocalypse just happened. <laughs> and I'd be like, what's going on? I don't even understand what's going on right now. Uh, that was one of my favorite in Fear the Walking Dead, one of my favorite scenes. It was in the first season when everything was going down. It was like the zombies or the walkers had come and the guy's like pulling this trash can to the front yard. Do you remember that? No. So like in the first season, like everything's like hitting the fan basically. But some people still think, oh, it'll be fine. Things are going to go back to normal. And he like rolls his trash can to the front of his yard and just kind of waves to his neighbor. I'm like, oh, that stinks. Poor last time he's ever going to do that probably. <laughs> I was, I, I'd probably be, that'd be me. I, I'd, I would be that guy. <laughs> you would be that guy. <laughs> like, like you well, said. What, what kind of NPC would you be? Would yeah. you be like an innkeeper or shopkeeper or just like a random person? Oh, in a video game world? Yeah. Hmm. So are we talking like, typical npcs or can we talk about relevant plot npcs it could be either i th- i don't feel like i would ever be a relevant plot npc though <laughs> let's see i think i would be some sort of sh- uh like depending on the game i could see myself seeing as i work in healthcare so do you i could see us being in like a hospital situation possibly where we help heal the characters or more than likely a shopkeeper of some sort i'd like i'd be the one selling you the weapons or buying weapons that you didn't need anymore for some reason. That, like, <laughs> oh, yeah. that, that reminds me of something. I'll, I'll, I'll get into that in a second. It's like, you have a wooden stick? All right, I'll buy it. Here's five gold. <laughs> so, okay, I'll get into something about, about that in a minute. But I feel like if I was an NPC, I'd be one of those, like, street people. You know, the ones you talk to on the street and there's like, hey, I'm Sam. Or something like that. They don't really say anything. They're just kind of there. That would be me. Or like you, you'd uh, be one of the NPCs that sort of uh, guides the player to the next part of the game, but doesn't doesn't come right out and say it. Like let's say for example, you had to get to the top of the mountain to get the ice crystal. He'd be the guy. You'd be the guy that goes, "Yeah, I heard there's a bunch of ice crystals on the mountain," or something like that. Yeah, there's always that person who knows that sort of thing. <laughs> hey, you think? Well, there's one in um, uh, in Breath of the Wild. You go and he's like what's that up there on that mountain? Like it's, he's like pointing to a shrine. Yeah. That was, that would probably me. He just sits there staring off into this. <laughs> there's a bunch of, yeah, I remember that guy. There's a bunch of weird symbols on the side of that cliff or whatever it is. Yeah. He was like, all right, what? Sure. But what we were saying earlier about the, um, Oh, what were, what was I saying? I was going to get back to. Oh yes. Uh, it's like the shopkeepers. So it's funny. Cause you, you sell the shopkeeper and you can sell them anything and they have to give you money for it. Right. So <laughs> I'm picturing, and I think um, the uh, Viva Little Dirt sort of played on this a little bit, if I remember right. You're like a shopkeeper who's trying to support his family, and some guy comes, he's like, hey, uh, yeah, I don't want this stuff here. Buy the sword for me. He's like, cool, I'm just going to pay for this sword that you're giving me. <laughs> Which, you know, at least you could resell that. But then you you, you try to sell him stuff like, um, like a radish. You're like, yeah. oh, here, take this radish. And you're like, Cool. Let me give you twenty gold for that radish. I'm trying to, you know, provide for my family, there's but you know, I'm just going to go ahead and give you money for something I totally can't use. There, in Final Fantasy XII, that's the one I've been playing lately. You uh, get loot and you sell it for money. That's how you get money in the game. It's not you don't just get money when you kill monsters like the older ones. Well, this is an older one now, but you know what I mean. You have to get loot and sell it. And one of the pieces of loot you always get is a pebble. <laughs> And you can I, I got like a hundred pebbles. I sold them all to some guy. I'm always going to do with those pebbles. <laughs> <laughs> like he probably doesn't even want them. He's just buying them from me because he has to. He's like, oh, fine. Unless there's a key item, something that's probably actually of a lot of value, but they won't buy that from you. You have like the dragon key. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but you can't sell it because you need it to play the game. The guy's probably like, man, I really want that. I'll, I'll give you all the gold, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> That's so true. It's like every time you try selling, it's like, uh-uh, 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 when you click on it, whatever it is. Well, when it makes that buzzing sound like that, do you think like the shopkeeper is doing that? <laughs> so you're like, here, I'm going to try to sell this key item. And he goes, uh-uh, <laughs> uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> Probably. I mean, that's, if, if I was a shopkeeper, shopkeeper, if I was a shopkeeper, I would do that. Like try selling something to me right now. Um. 
here by the uh <laughs> you didn't tell me what it was yet sorry i just don't want to do business with you <laughs> all right fine well you won't take my dragon skull of luthor then here uh how about i sell you a pebble instead okay here you go <laughs> here's 20 gold <laughs> that's awesome if I were made an RPG as a like actually legit made an RPG game, it would just be really dumb like NPC stuff. <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> that'd be pretty there'd be no actual quest in the game. <laughs> One thing, it's not really an RPG. I don't um like I have Animal Crossing and uh it's like kind of like this one of those world building games. You know, you've played Animal Crossing. Uh, and the NPCs in that are pretty cool. They actually do say pretty different things. Uh, they aren't always repeating the same thing over and over again. I'm sure if you, I mean, the people who run shops and stuff might be, but like the people walking around town, but that's the whole goal. That's the whole purpose of the game. You're not really accomplishing any specific goal. You're just kind of hanging out in your, on your island with all these people, well, animals. And uh, I think that it's, it's kind of, they're more interesting to me. And there's like a, in the new Animal Crossing, my, my buddy's really into playing it and, uh, there's like a like this horrible like animal trafficking thing going on online. So like <laughs> if you have like you can have villagers on your island and you don't want this villager anymore, you can sell that villager to another person for bells, which is like the currency in the game, which is kind of messed up actually. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So like my friend, so, uh... <laughs> my friend plays. He's like, yeah, I sold uh, Tim for for like forty thousand bells or something like that i'm like oh ooh, that's kind of uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> uh, i mean i'm feeling very uncomfortable right now <laughs> let me let me call the let me call the uh police or the fbi <laughs> and it's, it's like a whole thing like people sell stuff from their islands all, all kinds of things you can get on your island but the fact that they're like selling other animals just cracks me up oh wow, that's um that took a dark turn <laughs> <laughs> it's a super fun game i mean people go crazy I, I was really into it at first because it came out right in the peak of the pandemic, you know, and I think like, Steph and I were playing it a lot, but then we kind of, I don't, I feel like it's, it's still got a lot of following, but it sort of lost the allure that it had before. All right, man. Well, this has been good. I got a scoot for now, but uh, for our listeners, if you'd like our gaming streaming idea, let us know. We're uh, we'd love to get the ball rolling on that. And we're excited to, see what happens when david we can meet with david again and uh yeah and- also also um you know tell us who your uh, fair npcs have been over the years you know clearly our listeners are all gamers yes <laughs> and there's some good ones out there like, it, it, if i would have like i could have done more preparation had some good examples but uh, there's lots of funny ones out there and we'd love to hear some of your experiences with npcs but already folks We'll catch you next time. Hey everyone. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Brothers Born Podcast. You are super great. You are wonderful. And we love you. No big updates to this week. So just stay tuned and we'll catch you next time. See ya.